Hi, my name is Dr. Chris Stevens, and I'm a senior lecturer and accredited sports scientist from Southern Cross University. And today I'm going to be answering some of your questions from Ask an Expert. Is there a running technique for minimizing the impact on your knees when you run? And yes, what you want to try and do here is just shorten your stride length a little bit. And this is going to naturally um, change your foot strike to more of a midfoot strike rather than a rear foot strike. And what this will mean is that with a midfoot strike, we're actually starting to absorb more of the shock through our calf muscle rather than the shock being transferred up our tibia and into our knee joint. Just something to be aware of is that we don't want to be running up on our toes because this can actually um, be even worse and potentially cause a calf injury. What is better for your muscles after a marathon, hot or cold? Well, the jury is still out on this one. Both types of um, water immersion as a recovery strategy have shown significant improvements in the perception of muscle soreness and also some blood and muscle markers of inflammation. So it really comes down to personal preference here. I would, I would recommend trying both and seeing what works for you. What are some recovery stretches that I can do at home using general items without having to buy any equipment. You can look up some articles online. I suggest looking at Runner's World articles. That's a great resource. Give a little bit more focus to any areas that feel tight. I would recommend seeing a physiotherapist if you are experiencing any pain. And the other thing that you can do is you have, if you have access to a massage ball or a foam roller and just holding on areas that feel tight until they just slightly release. So hello, my name is Holly Muggleston and I work at Southern Cross University. I'm a nutritionist. Runner's trots is also known as runner's guts. It basically starts with a rumbling in the stomach and that may be all that it is. It may also be this extreme urge to defecate and the other one might be you have diarrhea. So if you're doing high intensity exercise like an endurance run, the blood that would normally go to your gastrointestinal tract to digest food gets diverted to other muscles. As you run, it gets jumbled up and it jars and it basically makes you feel like you need to have a poo. If you have less blood flow from less fluid being in your body, that can exacerbate the problem because there's even less blood flow going to the GI tract. Two to four hours after eating is when you would run the meal should be low in fiber, protein, and fat. It's best to drink water or a sports drink. What's the best recovery meal, okay? You need to have something soon after you do a run, but that meal should contain some carbohydrate, should contain protein, electrolytes, and fluid. Hi, my name is Scott Goddard and I'm a PhD candidate here at Southern Cross University and I research in the area of sport and exercise psychology. So the best way to motivate yourself to get started is by not putting too much pressure on yourself initially, by having too many expectations, especially if you're new to running or it's the first time that you're attempting a marathon. We should be looking at running a pace that's comfortable or a distance that's comfortable. And a good way to think about this is focusing on finishing the run feeling happy to run within the next day or two. So to keep up motivation post-race, I would suggest changing up the types of running that you've been doing. So for instance, changing the distances or the environments that you're running or potentially the routes that you've been running, anything that you can change up to keep running feeling new and fresh is a good way to continue to enjoy your running and keep that motivation up post-race. Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Butterworth. I'm the course coordinator of the podiatry and pedorthics programs here at Southern Cross University on the Gold Coast. So the best way to prevent common injuries is wearing good supportive footwear, making sure that that footwear suits your foot type, whether you've got a flat foot, a neutral foot, or a high arch foot. Other ways to prevent injury, making sure that you're strapping your ankles if you're susceptible to ankle sprains, making sure you're wearing orthotic devices if they've been prescribed. If they haven't, getting an assessment done prior to any marathon to see whether you are at risk is a good idea and your local podiatrist should be able to help you in that space. If you do get injuries, we do have a health clinic here at Southern Cross University. 
We can offer podiatry, pet orthics, osteopathic services, amongst many others. Please feel free to come and see us. Obviously, you can see your local GP or your local health practitioner should you need to.